Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Rush Roundtable. Today, we are talking about uh, what albums we wish Rush would have done live in their entirety um, throughout their career, similar to what they did with Moving Pictures on the Time Machine Tour. Uh, they opened the second set with Moving Pictures for its 30th birthday, and uh, we thought it would be a cool idea to each pick an album, maybe two, time-dependent, and um, share what tour we wish Rush would have played that live on in its entirety. Um, now, this idea I pulled from Reddit so a, a while back, so credit to the guy on Reddit that rhymes uh, <laughs> uh, for whoever whoever that was that came up with this idea. I pulled that from uh, from from that guy or gal on reddit so um uh we're gonna start with jim in the top left go ahead it's frozen maybe we Alrighty. are gonna start with I hope jim. you guys can hear me okay uh oh uh oh already all right you're good you we hear can me? hear you yes all right so uh I, I do have two actually so for my first one i am going to go with counterparts I absolutely love that album. It happens to be my favorite 90s album. Um, and I, I did see the tour. So, I, but of course they did not play, I think it was Cut to the Chase, Alien Shore, Speed of Love, and Everyday Glory on it. And Alien Shore, Speed of Love, and Everyday Glory are some of my top songs from that album itself. So that's why I want to hear it. Um, it would, the 20th anniversary of that album, would have fit on the Clockwork Angels tour, like during that time frame, I believe. I don't think, I don't know if they logistically could have fit it on that tour because they did play almost all of Clockwork Angels. And it made sense that they did that because that's a concept album. They had the string ensemble. I mean, all of that made sense. Um, I would never want to take <laughs> Clockwork Angels away uh, because I absolutely love that. And it was filmed in Dallas, which is where I live. Um, so that's totally awesome. Uh, but I would love to hear counterparts in its entirety. That'd be pretty awesome. Now that was, I know you mentioned the Clock of Angels tour, but the counterparts uh, tour was filmed, right? And then it got scrapped due to like audio issues or that's what I yeah, heard. Yeah, something. Yeah, because it was, because um, you could go to YouTube and find clips. Yeah, yeah, you can find the bootlegs yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, but I think it was, I think it was scrapped. Yeah, they didn't do Between Sun and Moon on that tour either. They didn't pull that out until they were doing Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, are you sure? Yeah, positive. Okay. <laughs> he seems pretty sure. <laughs> he seems like you were sure. pretty sure for a second there, Jim. <laughs> well, I, I, I know it's I know it's been played because uh, when yeah. I saw when I saw the do it in Gat in, in, in Dallas, Getty introduced it. And said, "Here's a song." I guess he said here's a song from uh, Counterparts. And yes, there is a lake between the sun and moon. Yeah, it was on the. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was, very, it was, on the, was yeah, um, they definitely did it. They definitely Council. did it in Rio, right? So yeah. Yeah, cool. Wow, those, those four songs. Cut to the Chase, Alien Shore, what did you say? The Speed of Love Speed and Everyday Glory? Oh my yeah. gosh. Great tunes. I mean, I, I, I love them. I think they're awesome. Four that I haven't played, played like. Yeah, good choice. I like it. Yeah, All right, thanks. so... Uh, the, the record that I chose that I kind of wish they played live in its entirety is, uh, well, most people probably suspect I'm about to say Power Windows on Clockwork Angels and might as well mm -hmm. have just played the whole album because they played like four songs. But that's not what I'm going to say, actually. Um, Snakes and Arrows on the Snakes and Arrows tour, uh, because they pretty much did everything but Faithless Ravis face good news first and we hold on um to my knowledge on the snakes and arrows tour uh, that might be like one off there but because i know faithless was brought out on uh time machine and then the other three bravest face good news first and we hold on we're never done live um but i mean it was either getty or neil that said in the uh the game of snakes and arrows documentary um that a lot of these songs were written to be done 
live and to kind of add to their, um, you know, adds to the life of the song once they're, once they're done live and such, and it brings on new life to the song as well. So um, I kind of agree with that. I mean, these songs, they, they, they really take on new life live songs, you know, like armor and sword and, and the larger bowl, uh, the way the wind blows. I mean, they all sound so phenomenal live. Um, and I think it would have been cool to hear this entire record. Um, probably like opening the second set on the snakes and arrow store, because you've got 13 songs on this record. You've got a guitar solo to kind of uh, hope to kind of break it up. Um, maybe Neil could fit a little drum solo in there or something too. Um, Far Cry opens the set. I mean, generally the second set had 12, 13 songs in it. Uh, so I just think it makes complete sense to do that. Um, and I, I would have loved to have heard Brave is Face, Good News First, and or We Hold On Live as well, because they're the bottom of this record is often overlooked. Um, but I think they are also three really awesome songs that, that probably should have been played live um, at some point. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my record that I, I wish Rush did live. Snakes and Arrows on the corresponding tour. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great album. The whole thing is is great. Yeah, it's just a, it's a perfect live. It's a perfect record for the songs to have been played live, and I think that's it why is. they why they did yeah. so many of them um, live. Plus, they love yeah. the record, but I think yeah, I think that's why awesome. uh, yeah. yeah they did that. So cool, cool, Chris. You're up. Okay. So Power Windows. Um, even though it was, they played half of it, but there was still another half that they didn't play on the Clockwork Angels tour. As far as what, I, you know what? Like it wouldn't have worked time wise, but to do a 30th anniversary presentation of that album the same way they did Moving Pictures, because I don't care what anybody says, that was an incredibly transformational album for that band. Um, I think that what Getty says about it is absolutely true about it being a perfect blend of keyboards and guitar. I think some of the most beautiful melodies they ever wrote are on that album. Um, there's fantastic guitar work. The keyboards are great. The drums, everything. So um, I think that it was an incredibly important record in their development. Um, uh, and uh, so I, I would have liked to have seen, you know, a 2005 tour since they were off that year, uh, dedicated to Power Windows. Um, and probably just what they did with the moving pictures, opening the second act and just straight. Like 20th birthday show? Hmm? <laughs> like, a, like a 20th birthday yeah. show? So it would, 30th, wasn't it? Oh, oh 20, 20, you're right. Yeah, 2005, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah 20. My yeah. math. Yeah, I would have uh, I would have loved to hear um, a motion detector live. I think that's the only song they never played live from that album. Right, and, and that, that's such a cool tune. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that with 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 what you said, Ryan, about uh, how doing it live gives songs new life. I, for that very right. reason, I'd love to hear that to see what they might do with that. You know, if they would change it at all, or or uh, you know just like the little subtle differences that they made in, in natural science, you know, that we talked about, right. Uh, you know, it, it just sounded so much better, you know, live. So that's me. All right, Jerry, you're next. Well, first I want to say that moving pictures was a great choice to play in its entirety, obviously. Um, and I would like to have seen them do Grace Under Pressure in a certain, in that same type of vein, a whole tour oh, yeah. dedicated to Grace Under Pressure where they open up the second act with just Grace Under Pressure. I just think it would be incredible to see all the songs in a row. Um, That's awesome. Just like they did, because Moving Pictures was such a fantastic, it was so fantastic to see that played all in a row. So I love I saw Springsteen do Darkness on the Edge of Town in its entirety, and I wish more bands would do it, actually. But um, Grace Under Pressure is just such an oddball album, I think. Placed where it is, and songs are, are an interesting mix of, you know, 
Alex's new guitar antics with his yeah. whammy bar in his whammy bar period. Yeah. Um, so that's the introduction, why. The introduction of Neil's electronic drums was on yeah. that album. Yep. Yeah. So uh, all those all those songs right were right played live. I could some at point some point at yeah. some point, and, yeah. and a lot of them were played on the Grace Under Pressure tour. I like, yeah, they were. Correct. Yep. They played everything. Yep. I mean, in the sh I the show I saw was right after they dropped that derivative. So I saw like one of the first few performances of um, I think was it the Enemy Within that they added? No, it couldn't have been that. It was um, yeah. like Red Lenses or something, probably right. Or was that no? Red Lenses was played. No, they can't remember what they they what they did. Which yeah. one was, but but seeing it in sequence would be is really the key, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's cool. I almost peed uh, when they played Body Electric on Clockwork Angels. I just yeah, oh, that was, that was that so song. awesome, so, man. so awesome. That was. <sighs> that's, a, that's a great choice. I love, love that choice. Yeah, it's a good it. very good, very good. All right, Adam. All right. Um, so it was between permanent. Let me waves let me and, put it let me put it yeah. this way. You're gonna have the opportunity to go a second time because we're doing great on time. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So I would say then I'll go with first one. I would say I would want to see is hemispheres, um, because I mean. The last three on that album are play, were played pretty consistently, um, but seeing book two, Cygnus X1 book two would have been so incredible. I understand why they didn't because <laughs> at the time it was recorded, it was too high for Getty. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't think his voice would have hit it, but if- He would have and, had to tune it down like in full octave. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think if they had done that on the R30 tour, I think it would have been really cool because it it would be getting close to the 30 year anniversary of the album, and um, and Getty's voice at that time still he I mean they they pulled out by tour in that tour, mm -hmm. and he was still able to wail pretty well. But I think it would have been really cool to see them pull out something so technically challenging at that time. Yeah, I always <laughs> thought that if nothing awesome. else, like to have at least once played played book two all the way through, you know, post, yeah. you know, post hemisphere or something. So, yep. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. Cool. Yeah, circumstances were the only real deep cut from that album that didn't get played that much. It was just uh Snakes and arrows, they brought that back. That was awesome. Yeah, they brought it mm -hmm. back Yeah. All yeah. right. <clears throat> Go around a second time. Jim. <laughs> All right, round two. All right. So my choice for round two, which may or may not surprise people, I don't know, is Caress of Steel. <laughs> that album like needs to get more love. It really is a, a great album. And the reason that I want to hear it, because I I mean, I've heard Bastille Day a bunch. I've heard Lakeside Park, and Lakeside Park is my favorite song on that album. But the reason I want to hear that album is because I want to hear the Fountain of Lameth play mm -hmm. in its entirety live. I think that would be awesome. So just play the whole thing. No problem. No problem. Add the other tunes. That's great. Um, the, the R30 tour actually marked the 30th anniversary of the album. 1975, it was what, 2005 was the tour, I think. 2004, 2005, I think. Yeah. 2004, yeah. 2005. So maybe like on a yeah. second leg of it, or like whatever. I think, I think it was recorded in 2005, you know, but that, that would have been a, a pretty good spot. But, you know, I, I did not see the Caress of Steel tour because I was um, not old enough to attend concerts then. <laughs> And with my first one being signals, <laughs> um, but I would I would really love to to hear that played live because I, I I kind of feel like the Fountain of Lemneth is the is the first long form 
song that they did that sort of sparked their ability to hit like 2112 and book two, you know, yeah. you know which were, to, I, I think were very, very successful. And I, I think that those probably would not have happened if they did not go through, at least not happen the way they were, if they did not go through the Fountain of Lambeth first. In hindsight, it's almost yeah. like the Necromancer and, and Fountain of Lambeth were like dry runs to see like, oh, let's see if we can, let's, you know, yeah. with this. And that's exactly what they did with 2112. Let's try this again, see if we can, see if yeah. we can nail it, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, even like the band kind of says, I mean, I know Crest of Steel was a down the tube store and sometimes the band will say, you know, that that was not their favorite, but I, I love it. I would like to hear it. How's that? <laughs> and, you know, it, it didn't go gold until the nineties. So they could have pulled it out, you know, there we go. Play it in the nineties and be like, sure. you know, to celebrate going gold finally. Yeah. Yeah. That, My that only concern is, okay, so they break out, I think I'm going bald, and then the tour is really going down the tubes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I, although maybe, I don't know, maybe that, that song could have been, you know, added another dimension to it if it was done live, because I don't think that was ever done live. Well, they did. I don't think there were plenty of people who were going bald in the audience. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> It'll be singing along. Yeah. Like me. They got that going for them. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, for my second one, um, this one I think is going to come as a huge surprise. Um, well, I, you know, I was I was debating doing a farewell to kings because like that's what Primus is doing, uh, or you know, uh, so th that could have been done as an anniversary thing. But I decided to go take a completely different route, uh, and I'm going with hold your fire. Uh, being done on the corresponding tour. So that would mean that you, you would have seen it on uh, a show of hands, right? So um, a show of hands has 14 songs on it. Um, so I, I'm assuming that's what, that's what they had in terms of time. I, I would assume they probably had an uh, opening act. I don't think that's every song on the tour though. I don't think, those albums included everything. Okay. You, yeah. You're probably right. Um, it's been a long that, time. Since I that, but I yeah. I, okay. <clears throat> I could pull that up in a second, but I'm just thinking like, I feel like a lot of people hate on hold your fire. And I, I, I feel like with hold your fire, it's like, <clears throat> there's like half the tracks people absolutely love. And then like half the tracks people absolutely hate. Right. So I almost feel that if this was played live, same thing, same thing I said about Snakes and Arrows, you know, perhaps some of these songs could have taken on another dimension because I think a lot of these songs that were played live, such as, uh, or maybe not played live often, such as like Lock and Key or um, like Prime Mover, they yeah. really take on a life of their own live and, um, you know, they just sound so great. I mean, songs like Force 10, Time Stand Still and Mission were played later in their career mm -hmm. uh but i just feel uh that this record often gets super overlooked and i think it would have been cool to have seen a lot of these songs played live and maybe people would appreciate it more and ty shan just because jerry's here uh i would love to have seen him play <laughs> ty shan live maybe jerry would have liked it <laughs> with, a, with, a, with like a quartet of chinese musicians <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it would be a bathroom break, you know. Oh, I had, it, you get the quartet surrounding Jerry, so he yeah. watched the show. Box me in. I had great seats for that show for the Hold Your Fire tour. So, uh, I mean, oh, yeah? you know, within like the first twenty rows or something like that, oh, and uh, yeah. Oh, sweet. And uh, I would have gone to the bathroom. I think if they played Taishan, even. <laughs> Oh, that tour in Buffalo. On the right there, ah, I just walked shame. right, right away from them. Shame, shame, shame. I will, I will say shame that. You uh, didn't share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have been like, "See you, Neil." I'm taking one of my ten thousand steps away from here. Oh no! The bathroom. Oh man! No. Up these ten thousand or. 7,000 stairs here. Whatever it is. How are you making yeah. uh, I don't even know how many thousand steps it is. Because I don't I haven't listened to the song in so long. 
Um, yeah, Chris, you're absolutely right. I just pulled up the set. There was 24 songs total. There was they did one full set and then an encore. Um, so uh, my mistake. They definitely could have just played "Hold Your Fire" right off the top, all 10 songs, and then went into you know their hits or whatever. So it, w- it would have been cool to see for me. I think uh, you know "High Water," seeing that live, "Open Secrets," "Second Nature." There's so many songs that just could have been done live on here too. That would have been really cool to see in full as part of seeing hold your fire live in its entirety anyways chris go ahead all right so my next choice uh is permanent waves um so just like uh what jim was saying about uh cross of steel leading into 2112 and so on um uh permanent waves was the springboard to moving pictures i always think of it as the revolver to to sergeant pepper you know (laughs) Um, because like Revolver, a lot of people look at Revolver and think yeah. it's more than Sergeant Pepper, even though Sergeant right. Pepper, like, everybody says Sergeant Pepper's the best. Hi, baby. Look at that. There's a baby. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, and again, I, I think uh, to have done this, um, I want to go back in time and I want to do it on the Permanent Waves tour so I can see everything else uh, that they would have nice. played. Uh, um, but having seen, I mean, we've seen everything from that album except different strings. Um, yep. That would have been freaking beautiful uh, to see that. Very pretty um, song. And of course, we all know how freaking cool Jacob's Ladder was seeing that on the R30, uh, 40 tour. And, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, just a, it's just such a phenomenal album and such a, you know, it was the beginning of their, you know, their post epic period, you know, which. Yeah the rest of their career and yeah. it just, I you know it was the beginning of what led to power windows and the albums that I love um from the 80s of just yeah. tearing down their sound and getting just as much in six minutes you know, what used to take 20 so fantastic cool. and you know there's such great live songs the spirit of radio obviously free will with that guitar solo has always been you know such a great thing to see live so yep. seeing all that together um i think that album is definitely worthy of its own its own showcase <clears throat> for sure mm-hmm. jerry well i'm gonna second that emotion because that was my second choice right. so that's it that's all i have that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you could said everything I like I like the 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 comparison, revolver and um, Sergeant Pepper. I love that. I never thought about that before, but it's so true. So that's, yeah. that's all I have. Plus, it's and the again, shortest would like, record they ever did, too. By the way, what's that? Yeah, it was. It, it is. Yeah. I said it's a sh- yeah. in terms of time. Yeah, it's the shortest record they did. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Permanent Waves is. So. so which which doesn't sound right to say, but it is. It's no. actually the shortest in time. Uh, so yeah, I mean. Do, do we have a fact checker? Sure. Google that right away. Hmm. Um, no, yeah. it was like 40 minutes, I think, or yeah, 36 yeah. 30, minutes. 38 or 36 minutes or something to that effect. Yeah. Wow. I think. Shorter, Close to being off. an EP. I'm going off the top of an EP. I mean, it just doesn't, <laughs> see, it doesn't feel like that because it has two really long tracks, yeah. you know, but right. it is. It is a shorter track. Jacob's record. Ladder and um, Natural Science, which are longer. Well, then, yeah, all right. It is. And I, I would have liked to have seen them play it uh, in its entirety from the beginning of the concert to start with Spirit Radio. Oh, yeah. Play it. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 So. Definitely. Because that's the greatest opener of all time. It is. The oh, greatest it is opener of all time. Such a great opener. Awesome. I have seen it so many times. It is so awesome. So great. Yeah. All right. All right. Adam, and why don't you go ahead and introduce your wife? Yeah, this is my wife, Julianne. Um, wrangling some kids before now, but she's... <laughs> but um, I guess we can start with her um, opinion. What album you would like to see live. And um, she unfortunately was never able to go to any concerts. Oh, that's right. I joined she, Rush Train too late. Yeah, she only became a fan in 2018. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Better late than never, though, right? Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Still changed my life. Party. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So it's between two. It's between Grace Under Pressure and Power Windows was the two I went to. Well, you can say them both because we each yeah. chose two throughout this. So. Two, so go ahead. Or maybe well, you say two. one and then let Adam say one and then you can say your second. Okay. Maybe how's that sound? So why would you want it to see Grace Under Pressure? Because I went through a period of time that that album was on repeat <laughs> in the loop. And I just love the cohesiveness of the whole album and the message of every single song combined. And I think it would be fabulous to see that straight through. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. I agree. I, I would love to. I've seen, I guess I actually have seen every song performed, but I would love to see that live in its entirety that's that's one of my that's one of my favorite albums yeah there it is so yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i could have a tattoo artist there to get tattoos of grace and oppression tattoos like during the concert during the show like added yeah at the merch table <laughs> the merch table 100 bucks grace and oppression yeah. tattoos that's a great that's a great choice i love it um, so my second choice um, was going to be um, Permanent Waves as well. Um, and with Jerry, that best position, I think, would have been start of the concert. Um, but um, it was really close between that and Signals. So I would, for my second pick, I would say Signals, seeing that. Um, and I think seeing that on the Presto tour would have been pretty sweet, kind of mm. bookending like where they started their journey through the eighties and then with Presto kind of being their new sound, I think okay. it would have been kind of cool to see like two sides of the, the coin uh, start and finish of, of their sound of that time period. Oh, cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Right. Cause signals was kind of like the beginning of the heavy keyboard era and Presto, yeah. right. the beginning of the end of the keyboard era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still some, still some stuff on there, but yeah, yeah. That's an interesting idea. I like it. Cool. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. My second one. Well, I guess next in line. I didn't plan it as this way, <laughs> but I also chose Power Windows as one that I would love to hear straight through. Um, other no, by no reason other than it's. I just love it. <laughs> like I don't have these deep reasons. I just think about the albums that I listen to straight through most often and Power Windows is one of those that I can listen to over and over. Um, and I just, I have nothing else to say besides that would be so cool. <laughs> it would be so great to hear That's Motion awesome. Detector live too as part of it being done in full. Yes. I mean, such a shame that that one never got played live. I know. To hear that in a big arena, that first, oh nope. man. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Or, or outside, <laughs> out, like hear that at an outside venue, like Jones Beach or something, or Saratoga Springs. Just echo. Oh my gosh, It'd be great. All right. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. Those watching, uh, let us know in the comments what record you would have liked to uh, have heard from top to bottom in its entirety uh, on any tour. Uh, similar to what they did with moving pictures on the time machine tour and uh we will you know we'll discuss with you in the comments so with that we will uh we'll wrap take care everybody Bye.